want to live a life of real abundance and monetary wise that's one of them and and i've been speaking a lot about that mustn't be your number one but but that is important the, the more money you make the more you can do for other people based on the principle when you and i win the most people i know that's really successful is also the most generous people that i know they they generous but they also the other side of generosity is because of generosity creates abundance but but you also need to accept i need to accept yuri's generosity towards me because if i don't do that if i'm terrible receiver i could also can't can't enjoy abundance because if i don't receive your generosity i don't allow you to be generous i don't allow you to live in abundance sure. um, that is so powerful wow All right, Jasper, uh, thank you for this time. I really appreciate that we can sit down this early in the morning and have a discussion. A couple of months ago, you, uh, or rather I did a poll on my YouTube channel uh, where I asked people, how do they perceive uh, things that they could do to increase their income in 2022? And you made an interesting comment, which is something that I wanted to discuss. And the comment you made is that you won't do any of these. You'll only focus on the structure in your current business. And uh, you made a couple of comments based on that. Um, the options in the poll, I'll put on screen now where it said working more hours, leaving, uh, learning new skills, starting a second job, starting a side hustle business, and starting an online business. And one of the comments you made is that you don't like uh, calling it a side hustle. Do you want to maybe comment a little bit on that? I had various discussions with various people regarding that. Um, and I think it's more, I think it's more my perception on the, the idea of, of a side hustle. I think the moment hustle sounds to me like you're working towards something that's really just money orientated, not, not goal and um, uh, purpose orientated. So that's really my belief regarding that. I think, a lot of entrepreneurs out there, um, even people that are working for somebody and, and want to generate the same income for, income for themselves, they generally only do it for the money. And the moment you just do it for the money, you will see that. And that's what, why a lot of businesses fail because you can't just do it for the money. If you just do it for the money, um, the very first roadblock that you will get in the road, you will stop. Um, you, you need to you need to find that bigger cause um, within you, and everybody do have that. I mean, we all are born into a purpose. Um, it's really just our our mission to to find that purpose. Um, you need to be like like Nelson Mandela, and and like I mentioned in his speech, is I'm willing to 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 die for this cause. You really need to, to, to stand up every morning. Um, I love the Japanese word ikigai, but waking up for something bigger than yourself. Um, and I think the moment you, you, you have that something bigger than yourself, that one purpose, that one word, whatever you want to call it, um, doesn't matter if there's a roadblock, doesn't matter if the road will be, will, will be difficult and it will become difficult on your, on your journey as an entrepreneur. Um, you will wake up every morning with a fire in your belly to, to go make a difference on that specific purpose of yours and that one word of yours. So I think that that is such an important thing is uh, the, the ikigai, the purpose of why you get up in the morning is the thing that should be driving your your business. I did another yeah. poll on my YouTube channel a little while ago that's that I, where I asked, why does a business exist? And th there were only two options. The first option was that it adds value or solves a problem. And second is that it makes money, right? So 80% of people says that businesses exist to make money. And incidentally, I found out that 80% of businesses fail within the five first, first five years of opening yeah. their doors as well. So there's a, there, you wonder if there's a close correlation between those two statistics. My, one of my mentors, Evan Carmichael, also main, always mentioned money must be in your top five, but never must never be your number one. Must never be your number one drive. So uh, I, I really do believe, I mean, a lot of people would change the world for money, but they won't change the world for purpose. 
you speak about money, people get excited. It's a, it's sexy. It's not not sexy talking about your purpose, wow. and and that's really I think that's 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 the hard work when you when you go into work, work personal development. If you go into develop your business, all of those things are hand in hand. You will never exceed your personal growth. Your business, your outer outer results will never be any bigger than the work you've done inside. Yeah, um, sure. So, so, but, but unfortunately, like I mentioned, it's not, it's not, it's not sexy thinking about purpose. It's sexy about thinking about money. Yeah, but I, I do sense that there is a change in the mindset of the greater society in the world. That yes, money is important, but that's not. We shouldn't chase money at the cost of ourselves or at the cost of any one person. Uh, the people people come first at the end of the day and i think there's a movement going forward that really understands that better than previous generations i i, I think I, I started noticing the same like you mentioned um probably since lockdown so since, since covid 19 it, it um i think that's that's something that that a lot of people got more um, compassion compassionate about um, for each other um, so I think it's de definitely people trying to be more kind towards each other. They understand more the situation because everybody was in the same situation. So I think it's 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 a kind of thing everybody could empathize, sympathize with each other because I mean we all had the same, we went through the same thing. Yeah, yeah. I so love what you said earlier about um, being willing to die for your purpose. I think we. I think there's a lot of content on the internet about your purpose and your passion and finding out what it is. And when you look at Ikigai, which you also mentioned earlier, is, you know, there's a couple of basic questions you need to answer for yourself to find that purpose, to find that Ikigai. But if yeah. you, a lot of people say, this is my purpose, um, to be wealthy, for example. Mm. And I speak on, on this channel a lot about genuine wealth, which also... Mm is not only focused on the abundance of finances, but other things in your life. But if you, as a, as a person, as a business owner, as an employee, doesn't matter what you do to earn a living, if your purpose is not something that you're willing to die for, mm -hmm. do you think it's possible that you haven't really defined your purpose well enough or, or made it clear enough for yourself about what your purpose is? Hi, Jasper Sonia. I just wanted to remind you about the Daily Entrepreneur Tips series. It's a business growth series for entrepreneurs and contains financial information and also information to grow you as a person and your business because we will never grow our business any higher than we grow ourselves. So click on the link below and I will send you daily information to grow you as a person and your business. And it's for 365 days of the year. Because at the end of the day, if you're not willing to die for it, then you know, is it really your life's purpose? I absolutely agree. I mean, it's, I mean, again, I, I think if you, I mean, it's a good test. I mean, if you, the moment you get into, get to a roadblock, which you will get inevitably, will get to a roadblock in a business. Um, I mean, every single day there's challenges in a business. Even if you, I mean, I really believe I live my purpose. I'm serving small business owners every single day. I'm going to my third decade right now. And every single day, I could see roadblocks if that was meant to be roadblocks for me. But because I'm so fired up in the morning, I mean, I mean, it, just, it, it doesn't matter what happens around me; it's what happens inside me. And and every morning I can wake up and I'm I'm fired up to 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 deliver and and to change entrepreneurs in Africa. Um, yeah. So it's it's a it's it's a matter of of. Uh, of perspective, um, and the, I mean, money just can't be the, the, the top top uh, top thing for you. Yeah. Yeah, for you. I, yeah, there's a there's a quite a good clip from Simon Sinek where he explains that money is the fuel for your vehicle, but it's not the purpose for your vehicle. Yes, your purpose for your for your business is to add value, solve a problem, mm. uh, make the world a better place. You need money to do that, of course. I mean, 100%. your car needs fuel to be able to go from one spot to another. But at the end of the day, that's not the purpose. The reason the business exists is to, yeah. to solve 
a customer's problem or a group of customers' problem if you if you have a good business plan or whatever. Do, I love what you very... said uh, as well in the comments. You said that working more hours is a killer of creativity and innovation. Now, on on my channel, I'm full time employed, and I think that's the big difference between you and I. Are mm-hmm. that you're already a business owner. You work full time in your business. I'm full time employed working for a company, which I enjoy. I love my job. Mm-hmm. But I think it is vital that all people should have at least one more income. Not because 100%. it's about the money, but just because the world is so uncertain that you actually need to develop one more than one income. Yeah. And I mean, your your salary is your first income. What you do with that money is or should be serving your purpose, right? Mm -hmm. But there is a balance between working too many hours and doing something extra. Let's talk a little bit more about that where you say it's a killer for creativity and innovation. Well, I think firstly, um, I agree with you, everything that you just mentioned. Um, I think it's merely a fact of, I mean, there's so many entrepreneurs that work so many hours that they, they work and I've been there as well. So I'm preaching from a place that I, I know where I am and where I came from. Um, yeah. So it's, um, you, you, you kind of work so much. I mean, I've been, when I started my business, I've been working probably, I, I think till three in the morning, waking up at seven again and go on again. And you kind of forget about the family and friends and everything, all the joys around work and why, why you work um, as well. Um, and, so it's, it's, it's a thing of um, you need to kind of prioritize, first of all, if you, if you want to start a business, I mean, during the last eight, nine years, I've developed lead optimizers with a partner of myself, a, a, a previous, previous client and now a partner in my business. Um, and I've been allocated, I allocated through all that time, four to six every morning for that business. So all the time I spent on that business was mainly four to six in the morning. So if you're a full-time employee, there's no reason for not having time. I mean, just allocate some time that won't disturb your family time during the, during, or, or do, by doing that. So for me, it was four to six was a good time. My family was still asleep. Um, I could focus on what I had to focus to, to build a business and expand the business but also it didn't come to the cost or at the cost of, of, of the family, of family time. And obviously during, as I go along, for especially the last three years, I've really developed spe- specific habits and really um, and organizing my business to the point that I'm not necessarily need to be there every single second um, for that business to, to be able to, to run. Um, so, but yeah, and then there's, so, there's so much science behind not, or not, not being overworked. I mean, the moment you're overworked, the mo- moment you're tired, you, you won't, you will never be creative. You will never be innovative. Um, because I mean, it, it just, it just how, how it works. Um, if, if you, if you're tired, you, you can't, um, and I mean, in, in modern society where you, we on on digital media all the time, and both of us do have YouTube channels and everything as well. So nothing wrong with that. Um, but but we tend to be always on on digital media, and our um, minds are like every everywhere. So every seven seconds is another distraction. There's not something else that 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 takes your attention if you allow that. Um, and I think that that is the problem is that our minds are so scattered all over that and and busy with everything all the time that we can't focus on how to grow our business and how to live a meaningful life um yeah we've got our mind is really just scattered all over the place yeah i know for sure and i think the two things or there's a couple of things that i want to comment on of what you just said is the the first thing is that what i hear you saying is that during a startup phase of a business there is a period of grinding, of putting in the hard, hard miles, but you shouldn't do that over an extended period of time. 
those those grinding times should be to develop the business to a sustainable level and then you can start training other people to to do those things and take care of the the day-to-day -day operations and you direct where the business should be going so there are times that you should be grinding and i heard a thing the other day that said the grind is for figuring out what works yeah, after that sense. you should be putting you know putting other people in places and employ people and really that's one of the purposes of a business is to create jobs so that other yes. people that that don't have that entrepreneurial spirit or don't have that resources to build a business so that they can uh, generate income and then hopefully use that income for a meaningful life for a purposeful yeah. life i saw a thing a thing this week of Tim Bukwayo, who's one of my favorite uh, South African content creators, at least. Mm -hmm. And I think he's making a big impact in South Africa and Africa. Yes. So someone I really look up to. Now, I forget exactly what, he, what I wanted to mention or what he was saying. Um, damn it. That slipped my mind now. <laughs> but anyway, so... Um, I think this, while you're thinking, I, um, I've got, when I was, I started my, my own, my own practice in 2006. And when I, I was, I, I came from the employee mindset and in the sense of, I want to do everything for the business. I wanted to be everything and being the jack of all trades for the business. I wanted to be the person picking up the phone, sending faxes. In those days, you still still send faxes. I wanted to <laughs> the person go to SARS, go to the client, um, go to the post office for 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 whatever. So it's it's I, I couldn't delegate at all, and I and, and that's also the reason I've been work in the beginning, been working such long hours because I could not understand. It. The art of delegating um, and it's something i'm trying to teach my team to do every day as well is if your team even if your team leader in the business you need to be able to delegate because the more you delegate the more you empower other people that that works underneath you um, the more the business can grow and the quicker the business can grow and the more effective you can grow the business and and service clients so it's um but it was not until the point that I decided that I need to change myself and be able to delegate um, that is actually at that point when the business started changing and I could start, I have my business, my company, I have my practice and I can start building from there because now I've been starting working on the business, not in the business. Mm -hmm. I started, um, I have an amazing team that supports me. I have a team of people 10 years and, and above that that's that, that's been working for me for obviously for many years then um so and it that allows me with my strong team to to build other businesses as well to to start creating some other solutions for 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 problems out there and 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 we're sitting in south africa with i think the most opportunities that we've ever had ever um there's no reason for you to complain about not having an income because there's so much opportunities there's so much solutions that you can offer for potential problems um, out there so and Absolutely. you can either and i'm going Absolutely. off off topic but you can either look at something as a problem or opportunity and both would be true it's only your perspective that that's the difference um that's so true yeah that's so true and I don't think it's off topic at all. I think it's so important that we as South Africans realize that we should stop waiting for someone to give to give us handouts. We should stop waiting for the yes. government to, to create jobs because they're not good at creating jobs. We've seen it with PSEOs failing. They were over, over um, employed and costing us as taxpayers too much money. And at the end of the day, you know, if you don't run a, a company for profit, then it, it can't create more jobs. And that's just the reality of the situation. But as you say, Absolutely. we have 
problems present opportunities. And if, if we can find ways to overcome the challenges and problems that we have, there are business opportunities there. The other thing is that we don't have to only operate in the South African economy to bring money into the economy. Yes. We are part of a global economy and the internet provides us with opportunities beyond our borders and beyond our uh, economy so that we can develop businesses outside the country and bring that profits and income into the country and employ people in South Africa. Um, 100% agree. I yeah. think the world, the, social media in the internet made it so easy, I mean, to, to work globally. There's, there's so much opportunity out there as well. Right. I've, I recently spoke to a client and his friend actually immigrated some time ago, a few years, I think, ago to Canada, which is an amazing country. But, but everything is working there. And he actually moved back to South Africa because he said there's no, there's no opportunities for him. There's no problem solving there because everything, is, there's probably 99% of everything has been, is working perfectly. So yeah, there's no opportunities from there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. there's no the solutions, solutions to offer anymore. Exactly. So, I mean, and with us as a third world country, um, I mean, it just, I, th I don't think we have enough time in the day, in the year to, to, to explore all the opportunities that they, they, they actually are. Um, yeah, one thing right. in, in lead optimizers that we do is we kind of constantly explore new ideas, new um, solving of problems. Um, in a specific niche um, and and what we then do is especially because I'm working with a lot of entrepreneurs I could identify entrepreneurs in that that's that looking like that are looking for opportunity at that stage and then do a kind of a joint venture between us lead optimizers um, and and the, and that entrepreneur so we would be the the mentor the the lead generator the brand builder of that of that business and the entrepreneur would be the person that, that works in the business and expand the business and potentially hopefully by mentorship we can we can get him and that person him or her, to also delegate and expand the business and also start working on the business um and which is something that, that that's been born from um from lockdown and that that we saw my my heart really changed um Especially in our company, the optimizer, we, we really wanted to form, start forming joint ventures with with other entrepreneurs, um, and really helping them to uplift them and empower them as well, to to create a, a better life for themselves, month, daily, monthly, but also something like a pension in the form of a business that they potentially have uh, that they can work towards um, as well. Um, so. Yeah, it's not, not not everything works, but uh, it's worth trying, and it's it's really something because we explore daily of what what could be a new potential business for somebody. I mean, you just see all the all the opportunities out there. There's so much solutions that you can you can fulfill. Yeah, for sure. No, definitely. Uh, something that comes to mind now is a book I recently read. Uh, it's called The E Myth by Michael Gerber. I say Gerber, not Gerber, as we would in South Africa, <laughs> because he's an American. He calls himself Michael Gerber um, or Gerber. He, in this book, he goes through the idea of that small business entrepreneurship is something that people go into because they, they work in a company. And I think we as employees and you as an employee in your previous life, we tend to think that we know the technical work that needs to get done in the business. And then we go start a business because we believe we can do it better. And then what happens, Michael Gerber calls it the technician mentality or the te technician personality. I don't know if you've read the book or not. And then he goes on to describe that you as a technician do the technical work inside the business. You work in the business. Whereas the entrepreneur is the guy who's got the vision, the, the, you know, the future and where the business should be going. And then you've got the manager trying to keep all of these things in check and, you know, making sure everything runs smoothly. And then he goes through this process of business development inside your business, which is a very interesting concept where as the shareholder in the company, 
not the employee in the company, you do the strategic work. So you say, these are the positions in the company and these are the responsibilities of each of those positions. Now, as your business starts, you are responsible for all of those positions. Mm -hmm. But as the business development process goes on, you develop the responsibilities of that position. And then when you employ someone, you tell them the responsibilities as you've experimented with what works best in that position. And then you can focus on the next position until you have that sorted out well enough to employ the next person to do that specific position. And I found that so insightful. And I, anyone, anyone watching this video, I, I suggest if you have entrepreneurship in mind or you have a sideline business or if you have a small business to go find the e-myth by Michael Gerber and go read it. It was very, very insightful, specifically about what Jasper and, Jasper and me are talking about right now. Um, I wanted to ask you, Jasper, the, as a person coming from employment, and having started a couple of businesses, being involved in mentoring entrepreneurs and so on, how do we improve the success rate of small businesses or entrepreneurs, uh, startups? Well, I, I can only, I can only talk from my perspective, but, and I recently done a video on it as well. The, the, the one thing that I see that most entrepreneurs don't do is they don't stick to their word. Um, how many how many times do you work with suppliers, and even in, where you are employed? Um, how many times do you work with, with somebody that that tells you, "I will do that for you tomorrow," but they never do it? Um, when you start sticking to your word, when you start saying, "I will send that to, tomorrow," even if it's a simple thing. If I talk to you on social media or on WhatsApp and I, I mentioned to you or in a conversation, I mentioned to you, I will send that specific link because that you will find benefit from that video or or book or whatever. And I tell you, I will do it. I need to stick to my word and actually do that. Um, one of the most overlooked values in business is ethical values. And it's about three that I think that, that we can discuss. And, but the first one is sticking to your word. When you stick to your word, you, you're building respect and reputation with the people that you surround yourself with, whether it's suppliers, whether it's clients. And most importantly, you build respect for yourself. The biggest reason people don't have, have um, integrity or self-confidence is because they don't have integrity. And integrity comes from sticking to your word. When I say I'm going to do something, I actually do it. Um, and I mean, if you if you look look at typical entrepreneurs, they will make a, they will do a, arrange a meeting with you, and they would, on a Zoom or on a in a coffee shop, and they will just not pitch. They will, won't just they, this won't be there, um, or they will be late. And that's the other point is I mean, if you're not early, you're late. That's come from one of my mentors, uh, Robin Sharma. Um, be on time, be before time, um, and schedule your day that you know exactly where you need to be, where you, where you need to be, and when you need to be there. And I think the last thing, very simple, that that small little words, please and thank you, that that everybody forgot. Um, please say I I respect you and thank you, sir. I appreciate you, and and that's something that. In, in a, again, in the world of constant distraction and 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 always rush and the hustle word, um, people forget that small little words that they can just throw in there to to show the appreciation and respect to each other. So uh, that's not exactly what you were looking for, but I think that but but I think ethical values. Um, Robin Sharma, I, I keep mentioning him because he's one of my my mentors and I have been walking a long path with him under as a mentor for me in various ways. Um, but um, when he, he talks about the eight eight forms of wealth and growing your business in, in money wise, money prosperity is only one form of wealth. Um, and there's so much. I mean, and your forms of wealth can be all be different. 
but 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 in my opinion, and that's not one of his words, but but ethical wealth is is really, I believe, is one of the most overlooked values that people in business need to incorporate. The second thing I think really get get structured um, when you when you work work when you when you play play when you ever mix it to of the famous Jim Rohn. If you if you if you at work focus on the work and focus on the things that need to be done, I think you can work five hours a day. You can work four, work four, four hours a day, and you can do a lot more than most people do in a week, merely because you're really super super focused. Um, so I think that that is something also to look at. And if you, if you structure your work, if you, I mean, like with. I'm not, again, I'm going to back to what, working, what, what is working for me, but with our monthly accounting clients, I have a pre-booking pre system where I pre-book my clients for the rest of the year. So my clients and myself know exactly when we see each other um, for the next year. Obviously, it's, it's, it's not just sticking to that program. We can obviously see each other other times as well, but, but that's a guaranteed we see each other. So everything is structured as much as possible and from there you can start arranging your day if, if need to be um as you see fit but but you're already structured um the second thing is work on yourself the harder you work on yourself the better you will see the results in your business you will never see the results any better on the out outside of and your outer world will never be better than the inner work that you've done yeah, I think that's so important. So many times we keep us, we hold ourselves back simply because either we don't believe in what we we are doing or we don't believe in our capability to achieve that. Yes. The, the thing I wanted to mention earlier of Vusi Tempukwayo is where he says that we are holding ourselves back, essentially. We have to work on ourselves to be able to improve going forward. There's no way, like you say as well, you can't outperform your inner belief and we need to work on ourselves first before we are able to grow forward and i think that's the big thing about someone who starts up a business to begin with in the start of business you have to do everything because you are the one starting the business but you need to be able to grow internally and be able to train someone else the to do the work you were doing in the same way or better than what you were doing it and your ego shouldn't come in you know shouldn't be a barrier to overcome yeah. once you hand it over to someone that person needs to understand their responsibility and their role and their purpose of that role and perform that role diligently and effectively and if they don't then you both you and that new person need to learn or they need to choose whether that is a good fit for them or not and then move on so that you can find someone who can do that job the way you expect it to be done as the owner of a business. Yeah. Jasper, I think there's a lot we can still discuss. I don't know how much time you necessarily have uh, put aside for this. I don't want to keep you for too long, but I'd love to hear from you more. So if you get to a point where it's, it's at the end of this conversation, then just let me know. 100%. I think I just want to mention something else. I, I, I have till about six o'clock, so we can, okay. uh, but, but it's up to you. Um, I enjoyed the conversation a lot, so you can go on every all day, but I have, <laughs> I have kids, <laughs> kids to, to, to <laughs> take to school and everything. Yeah. Um, I love the idea of, like you mentioned, I'm also a big fan. Of, I think one of my, my best video on, on YouTube is, is from Vusi Um, on a on the mentor series I've done on, on specifically on him as well. Um but but and, and I agree with you um the, the the mindset part is very important in business. You need to sort out the limiting limiting beliefs. Um something that really worked well for well for me um personally was every morning and every evening 20 minutes before and 20 minutes as I woke up do affirmations do visualization of that affirmations and 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 really influence my subconscious mind um, and get rid of a lot of my limiting beliefs. Um, so I really do believe 
in that, I, I mean, I read a lot of books. I've got a whole library up on, on top of my head here. <laughs> um, like you mentioned, e myth, and, and there's, there's so, much, so many books to read and so many amazing books to read. Um, and when you start reading a book, it's like having a conversation with the author. Um, mm -hmm. You learn learn something that you learned over 20 years, you learn in a day or a week or a month, depending on how, how quick or, quickly or fast you, you can read. Um, so I 100% agree that that's so, so important. Uh, but, but a lot of people overlook the emotions, look, look you, you can have the best mindset. I used to be a martial arts instructor as well. Um, and if, if you only work on the mindset, people might become strong, but also become arrogant because, and you just mentioned ego as well. That's why I kind of had a, a smile on my face when you mentioned it. Um, it's, it's very easy when you only focus on mindset that you start to become a confident, arrogant person. <laughs> um, so what I would also suggest is to look um, and work through your, your emotions as well. Um, and you can even go deeper into your spiritual side of things as well, which I'm not going to go into now, right now. But the emotional is how many times, if you think back in your own life, um, heartbreaks, um, business partners, and in, in that that went high wire, um, people that you didn't forgive from your past, um, so, things that you didn't work through from your past, how that influence and um, basically influence your cre creativity and influence your productivity. Um, you can have a strong mindset, but you can still be held back because emotionally you have things that you need to work through. Um, and then obviously the third, another thing is, uh, is to, to, to work on your fitness. If you, if you, if you work out every single morning, you will be fit. And, and there's so much more um, because you're, because you're, you fit, because you're eating lean, because you do everything in, in the sense of your body, you can also perform better. You can also be more productive. So there's so much things to really talk about in that um, spectrum. But I think it's just regarding the conversation, it's just very important not to just focus on, on mindset, but really focus on your total being as a person. Because once you fix all the various aspects, um, you can start, you will see how your life start improving. And as you personally improve, like I mentioned, then your business will also improve. Yeah, I think that is so important and um, a big part of the message on my YouTube channel is the, the, that, complete, that concept of genuine wealth, the abundance of finances for sure, but also the abundance of quality relationships because no one person is an island. We need other people in our lives, either as Absolutely. partners or as mentors or as team members or as employees. We, and friends and family, we need people in our lives to be able to really have wealth in our lives. And then the, the third quadrant is genuine wealth. And that includes your emotions, your physical health, your uh, mental health and your spiritual health. Because we as humans aren't only physical, we aren't only emotional, we are spiritual beings. And then lastly, I think, and this is a big thing is, and we touched on it earlier, you can't spend all your time working. You have to have an abundance of time to be creative, to just sit quietly and think and work through your own emotions and work through your, you know, the things like you mentioned in the past that you haven't worked on before. You need to take control of your schedule. And it's almost like all of all four of these things interact with each other to create more or less of the other so the balance of all four of these things is so important but the main thing is that all of these should be focused around or anchored by your purpose 
the same concept of Ikiga, yeah. where yes. everything intertwines or intersects to to revolve around your purpose. And I think I almost want to come back to you know everything that we've discussed. Both you and I, our channels have a certain purpose and there's a reason why we started those channels and mm -hmm. it might be slightly different for the two of us but I, I have a feeling that both of us want more people to succeed either in business or in their life mm -hmm. their personal lives and we want people to um, be happy at the end of the day with what they create in their lives um, so I think I've, I've got one of my favorite sayings is, when you win, I win. And I think the, the moment you start believing, really, really believe in that concept of when you win, I win, then your life will start changing. All of us has been, been born into abundance. And it really just, over, over periods of time, going through school, in your, in your adult life, people look down onto your goals, look down onto your dreams, and 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 start building stories for you regarding how the how the actual world works um and the way you, you see the world and the way i see the world is merely the perspective of the truth um and i think that's very important to to note i mean if if there's one thing that you, you that you kind of hear today in in this conversation not you but but anybody listening um is that your there's this specific filters, subconscious filters in front of your eyes, and and the the way you see the world is really how you how your stories built up to that filters and 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 how you now see the world. Um, so the way the way I see the world and someone else might see the world can be totally different. But none of us are incorrect. None of our, us are wrong. It's just that's my truth and that that person's truth. Um, but but what, what I found in my life was, if you want to live a life of real abundance and monetary wise, that's one of them. And and I've been speaking a lot about that. Mustn't be your number one, but but that is important. The more the more money you make, the more you can do for other people. Um, based on the principle when you and I win, um, so the, the 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 most people I know that's really successful is also the most generous people that I know. They they generous, but they also the other side of generosity is because generosity creates abundance. But but you also need to accept. I need to accept Yuri's generosity towards me, because if I don't do that. If I'm a terrible receiver, I also can't can't enjoy abundance. Um, because if I don't receive your generosity, I don't allow you to be generous. I don't allow you to live in abundance. Sure. Um, that is so powerful. Wow. So it's 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 really and I mean all of us, I mean, we we all tend to be generous in, in our specific way. But we, I mean, I know a lot of people that, that don't want to receive anything, but, but you can't, I mean, I receive income because I add value to somebody. I yeah. receive love from my, from my spouse because I give love to my spouse and she accepts the love and I accept the love back. Um, so it's in all kinds of aspects, we need to be able to, to give and to receive. Um, and again, abundance is not just money. It's, it's, it's abundance all around us. Right. Um, and, and when you start living that truth and living in that magic, I mean, life becomes truthfully joyful. Yeah, that is, that, you know, there's so much, so much we can still talk about. Um, I just want to mention something that Gary Vaynerchuk and we might not always agree with the way he, his message is conveyed or agree with what he says always. But the, the truth is that one of his core messages is that you should be happy. Your main focus is that you should be happy. 
number one. And number two is that true happiness or true kindness, rather. True kindness is when you do something nice for someone else without expecting anything in return. Because the moment you start, and I think Jim Rowan said the same thing as well. The moment you start expecting something back, then you're setting up a trade agreement rather than truly being kind. And if we can have more of that where I am Yuri and I convey a certain message or a certain act into the world and you as Jasper, you are content with who you are. And from that place, you do whatever it is that you do without expecting anything, anybody to come back and say, oh, thank you. You've been so good to me. Then in essence, you're living from a place of um, what you said earlier, um, confidence. If you live from a place of confidence without being arrogant, then you can truly be kind and tell people, this is who I am. If you don't accept or not, if this is who I am and this is what I bring to the world, I offer this to you without expecting anything in return. And if I don't get anything back from it, then you go along your merry way and carry on with your life. There's no reason to feel that someone else is trying to do you in just because they didn't do something back to you that you were expecting. 100%. I think a lot of people are generous, but they want to see what is the return on that generosity um mm. but abundance doesn't work like that i i give my 100 free time to yuri this morning and because of that somebody else does that does something similar to me the person you give it to is not necessarily the person that will give it back to you um but it, it's it's an act of generosity that you open up the world of abundance um but like you mentioned, without expecting anything back, because that's so important. That's so, that's so important that you don't expect anything back. Um, yeah. A lot of people that you will do something in through an act of generosity, they won't probably won't even um, uh, value that in the sense of of what you've done for them. But that doesn't matter because that was not the intention of giving. I can't. Uh, and that's a touchy subject, but you can't give it to the church. You can't give to the government. You can't give to anything. And and go look over the, sh over the shoulders of, of everybody and see what they're doing. Mm. I'm giving that because that is what's supposed to happen. And from there, I need to do what I need to do. And I need to do what I need to do. But when, when I start looking over the shoulders of everybody, I'm, I'm pulling myself away from the world of abundance. Yeah, that is so true. That is so true. And that's, something, that's something that anybody wants to hear, but it is, unfortunately, energy works like that. Whatever that's the we truth. do affects the whole. Exactly. And that's the same truth I believe as well, is you need to be, you need to free yourself from expecting anything back and you need to free everybody else from your expectations. Because... It, this comes back to what we were saying earlier is your perception is what you expect you your you, what you expect is affected by your perception of how the world works and how much value you give versus how much value someone else gives you but at the end of the day we all do as much as we can and if we expect more of someone one than firstly what they're willing to give or what they are capable to give because we have a perception of that person being better at something that they really are, then we create unhappiness. We create frustration through our own perceptions and expectations. So, yeah. I just want, I just want to, and we need to finish up, but I just want to end maybe the conversation with this. Every, everybody does the best they can with their current ability, with their current maturity. Um, so you can either react in anger or frustration, or you can react in love. And, and when empathy. you start reacting in love and empathy, when you start reacting in love, um, you can create something beautiful in the world. Um, 
it doesn't matter a lot of people that's angry there's a lot of people that's against whatever i mean we can if you can start uh, uh, looking at, at at things that people are against i mean you can go a long way mm-hmm. but does that really affect me is that really something i need to do or can i just mm-hmm. react in love and and um and love is a, like a universal language and it's not a love like a uh like a spouse or anything it's just reacting in love reacting in love of i understand your you have your your opinion is your opinion but your opinion is only your opinion mm-hmm. um and it doesn't have i don't have to disagree or need to like people do on social media attack people for their opinion your opinion is your opinion i don't even have to react on your opinion I can just, you know, if I want to react, react in love. You just mentioned Gary V, and something I see you do a lot is when people attack him on social media, he just react in love. Yeah. You always react and in love. And has such good results at the end of the day. When you, when you are able to do that, the results are so much better. I mean, yeah. we, we, you, you mentioned church and stuff earlier. And I'm a Christian, and nobody else, I, don't, I respect anybody else's religion. I don't have any problem with anybody else's religion, yeah. but. The Bible says that a kind word, um, I forget the exact English now, but the, the, the principle is that a kind word deflects anger, deflects frustration. And if you can r- react in kindness and in love, then it just makes the situation all the better. 100%. A lot of times, whether you are jealous of, let, let, let's create a scenario. I'm jealous of Yuri, what he, what he has been achieving in, in his, in, on his YouTube channel. Let, let's create that, that. So I can either react in, in why am I jealous? And, and so I can either go to fear or love. That's the only two ways I can go. So I can go in, in, in fear is I will act and try to belittle you and try to find ways to why you're not so awesome as it might seem and or i can re- react on love and do self-inspections why am i jealous jealous about your youtube channel um why am i jealous about your success um because there's something that i need to work on in myself and and that's the difference between reacting in in, in fear and reacting in love um and that's something i really i i I really try to work towards is always react in love. I always blame somebody else for his success. Um, we're not in a race. We're not in a competition. Um, and you're beautiful and authentic as you are. And God doesn't create extras. Oh, yes. So true. So true. Jasper, thank you very much for your time. If you just want to mention where people can find you, if they'd like to get in touch with you. Um, I'm on Instagram and Facebook on my name, Jasper Basson, and then on YouTube as well of Jasper Basson Entrepreneur Inspiration. And I do a number of videos, various angle videos there. Um, but yeah, you can connect with me in any of those three places. Awesome. Thank you for your time, Jasper. And Thank have you for the a conversation. great day and all, all the blessings for you going forward. Same to you. Thank you. All right, awesome. Bye-bye, Asper.